Setting up our menu system is going to require several new assets. Over here in the sprites, I have a sprite completed, which is just this message. Size doesn't really matter, but the sprite is centered. And then I've created a sprite button, and this is going to have all of the buttons that go to all of our stages. And if I open the edit sprite, you can see it has several sub-images. I'm only doing four right now, but a real game would have dozens. It's important to remember that even though we are starting with a sprite for level one, the sub-images themselves actually start at zero. We will need to know that for later. The origin for these is at zero, zero. Then I've created a few new backgrounds, a BG title and a BG menu. These are both the size of the room and the only difference is that the title has the name of the game in it. Right now we're only going to deal with the menu. I will do the title room in another video. So down here in the rooms I've created a room menu that just has the menu background in it. And then in our objects here I created an object completed and an object button from the sprites. We'll deal with the object completed first so open that up. This is not solid, but I have set it to a depth of negative 20, so it appears above everything. And this object will appear once the room has been cleared. And the sprite says press enter, so that when you hit enter, it goes back to the menu screen. So that's easy to set up. We'll come to add event, keyboard, enter. And then over in main one, we'll tell it to go to different room. We will set that up to our room menu. That's it for this object. Now let's make sure it shows up when the game is completed. So open the object hatch. And in this internal block here, we will have our object completed be created. So main one, create instance. We'll drag that underneath, setting the global variable. We'll go ahead and create the object completed. And this is going to be in the center of the room. So we need to set this to room underscore width divided by two in the X and in the Y we need it to be room underscore height divided by two. And that's all we need for that. So now let's go ahead and set up our menu. I forgot to mention that I also created a room level two, which is just another simple puzzle. I'm not going to create a room for, for all of our different button sprites. So let's go ahead and open the room menu and we will add our object button. I'll go ahead and add four of these. And they're not going to line up perfectly, so if I hold down the Alt key, I can move them around without having them snap to the grid. I'll turn that off. And they're not going to be perfect, but that's close enough. Now, in the official tutorial for how to make a level select screen, it actually tells you to just make a separate object for each button that goes to each level. But again, I think that's really inefficient because you end up with dozens of objects that only have one purpose. What I'm doing here is creating a single object and it's going to change its sprite and what room it goes to based on the name we give it. So right now, all of our buttons are showing the first sprite. But to determine which one they actually need, if you just mouse over one of these objects and you look down there at the bottom, you can see the ID property. And by default, instances on screen are given some random number, and each object is different. But rather than memorizing this little randomly generated number, we can actually give it our own IDs. And we do that simply by right-clicking the object and then down at the bottom, you'll see Rename Object Instance. And so for this first one, I'm going to give it an instance of BTN for button underscore one. So now when I mouse over it, you will see it says ID is now button one. I'm then going to come to two, rename it to BTN underscore two. Come to the third one, rename BTN underscore three. And the fourth one, rename btn underscore four. So now based on the names I've given them, we will have the object determine which sprite it holds and which room it will go to. So let's close the room. 
and open our object button. So the object is going to determine its sprite when it's created. So let's add an event, create, and the better way of doing this is to use code and what is called a switch. But since we're not getting into code right now, we'll have to do it sort of the clunky way. And this is simply going to be testing for the ID variable and matching it up with its sprite. So come over to control and we will test variable. The variable is going to be ID equal to a value of btn underscore one. So if it's the first button, it gets the first sprite. So come to main one, change sprite, and we will change that to our sprite button. Give it the sub image zero because that is the first sprite in the sequence and a speed of zero so it does not cycle through all of them. Click OK. Now we'll do this for the three other buttons. I'm simply going to select everything here, copy it, and then paste, paste, paste. So for the second one we need to see if it is an ID of button two, and if it is we'll give it a sub image of one. The third one needs to be button three, it gets the sub image two, and the final one is button four, and it gets the sprite sub image three. And so setting up which room button goes to when we click on it will be very similar. Let's go to add event and mouse, and we're actually going to come down to left released. That way if a player mouses over a button, clicks down on it but changes their mind, they can pull the mouse away and they will not go to the next level. So left released, and we'll come to control, test variable, we will test for the variable ID, give it a value of btn underscore one, and this is just going to go to the first level. So main one, we'll go to different room, we will select level one, and then we will just go ahead and copy this, paste it again, and this time instead of button one, we have button two, change this to level two. Since we only have the two levels, we can stop here, but in a full game, of course, you could have dozens of these. But this is complete. And before we test this, one final thing I want to add is another hotkey. I want the player to be able to hit the M key to be able to go back to the menu. That way, if they get stuck on the level that they're on, they can just go back and try another one. So let's reopen the object player. And this is going to be very similar to our R key event. Let's add event, keyboard, come down to letters, and M. First, let's test and see if the game is over, although at this point it really wouldn't matter because the player is going to go back to the main menu when they complete the level anyway. But let's come to control, test variable, test for global dot game over being equal to false. And then we'll come to main one, different room, and we want this to go to the room menu. Now when you have hotkeys like this, it's a good idea to have some kind of instructions page where you alert the player to this. And in fact, it would probably be better just to have buttons on screen to reset or go back to the main menu rather than having these hotkeys. I'm just being lazy by adding these in. But you could, of course, have both. So let's go ahead and close this. Now we can test our game. Okay, so if you made sure the menu room was first in the stack, you should come to the menu. The three and four buttons do nothing, but when I click on one, it takes us to the first level. I'll go ahead and complete it very quickly. And it should bring up our completed, press enter. When I do, it takes us back to the main menu. I'll click on two, it takes me back to the second room. If I hit the M key, it takes me back to the room as well. Go back into the room and make sure it is beatable. I didn't make it too difficult. Okay, and we go back to the main menu. Now in some games, you don't just want all of these levels to be open like this. You want them to be locked and then once a player has beaten one level, the next one in sequence unlocks there might be a bonus level that will unlock once certain things have been completed. Typically there's also 
some indication that you have beaten a level, like a little star will appear in the corner or a check mark. And we can do all that with this game, but it's easier to implement with code. So when we get into the Game Maker coding language, we'll come back and have a look at that. But in this game, and especially really hard puzzle games, you don't necessarily want all of your levels to be locked and require the player to beat them in order. Because then a player might get stuck on a level, they won't be able to beat it, and they won't be able to choose some other level, so they'll get frustrated, they'll quit your game, and they'll never play it again. By leaving your menu open, you allow the player to skip a level that they can't beat and try another one. But this game is more or less complete. Now I just want to go back, polish it up by adding a title screen and some music and sound effects.